football life. So the NFL Draft is in the books, and I've gotten a few questions from my awesome viewers about what happens with the rookies in signing their contracts. I thought it might just be easiest to make a video. So thanks to you guys for the suggestion. Let's talk about rookie contracts. Before we get started, here are a few fun facts that most people don't know. Rookies don't get to join the team right away. The NFL has rules to encourage players to finish school. Teams are allowed a three-day minicamp over one of the weekends following the NFL draft where they get to bring in all of their rookies. After that, no rookies can join the team until the later of a date in mid-May or when he has taken his last final exam. So players who have go to schools that are on the quarter system are actually at a disadvantage. Any players who try to get around this by dropping out of school, they actually aren't allowed to participate until their school's last final exam. So the only way to get around this is to graduate early. Draft picks don't have to sign contracts before they can participate in minicamp or the off-season program. However, if they aren't signed by the official start of training camp in late July, then they are barred from activities with the team. Until then, they are allowed to participate while their contracts are being negotiated. Drafted rookies sign four-year contracts. Undrafted rookies sign three-year contracts. First-round picks automatically have a club option in their contract for a fifth year. This means during the third year, between January and May 3rd, the club can add a fifth year to their deal. Third through seventh round picks automatically have an escalator clause in the fourth year if they meet certain playtime conditions. Roughly speaking, they could double their salary in the fourth year. Second round picks don't have anything special, but they do traditionally receive much better guarantees than the later picks. The Collective Bargaining Agreement, or CBA, has a very structured system to set the upper and lower limits of the draft pick contracts, but the contracts still do need to be negotiated. Each draft slot has a dollar value assigned to it, so regardless of who the player is or what position he plays, there's a value set based on where he was drafted. Now each team will have a maximum total spending limit, which is based on the sum of the allotments for each of their picks. There's a bunch of trading that occurs during the draft, so teams don't know what their exact dollar allotment will be until after the draft ends. As soon as the draft ends, the NFL adds up the allotments for the draft picks each team used and tells the team what their limits are. Then the teams are free to go and start negotiating their contracts. I know this is quite complicated, so let's go through a few real life examples. The San Diego Chargers drafted Michigan center David Malk in the seventh round. The formula allotment for Malk is roughly $404,000. If San Diego wanted to sign him and use $410,000 of their team allotment, they could do it, and Malk would probably be pretty happy. But that $6,000 difference would have to be taken away from one of San Diego's other draft picks, who would probably be very angry. Meanwhile, if San Diego offered Malk a deal for less than his allotment, he wouldn't want to sign that deal. So both sides know what a fair deal is and they can quickly work towards signing the contracts. Building on our first example with David Malk, San Diego's first round pick, Malvin Ingram, has an allotment of over $1.5 million. As a first round pick, he's going to make so much money that he might not even notice a $6,000 difference, but the same principle applies. If you take that money away from him, he will notice and be very angry. Ingram's agent will probably also argue that as the team's first round pick, he should get more of the team's allotment at the expense of the later round picks. Now Mulk's agent in turn will be eager to agree to a deal that's fair and at the allotment amount to make sure his client gets the right amount of money. So as you can see, it becomes really easy for all the contracts to be reached at the formula allotment instead of players holding out for more money down the road. Thanks so much for watching and a huge thank you to my viewers who commented on my last few videos with questions about contracts and prompted me to make this video today. Now I know this subject matter was a little intense, but thanks for sticking through it and watching until the end. And as a reward, I've included a photo of a super cute puppy.